Okay, so we got our robot. Uh, we've done. We got it set up so that the sensors tell the motors to go in the right direction when it encounters a line. Uh, I have some black electrical tape and a tape line on my floor. So let's see if this works. I have no idea if it's going to work. Uh, I've done no tuning. I've added a tiny bit of proportional gain to the PID controller and nothing else. And just made sure the directions are the same by like holding it up and moving it. So yeah, let's just yeah, let's pull, throw it on this line and see what happens. Uh, to connect my battery. Okay, so let's line it up. Is that about right? Uh, got the sensor either side of the line. Uh, let's flick the switch and see what happens. Oh no. <laughs> That's not right. Oh! Oh my god, it's doing it. <laughs> what? Why is that not spinning though? Hmm. Let's try that again. See what happens. How are you getting stuck on the motor? Oh. Oh god. <laughs> hmm. Maybe we need to do a little bit of tweaking. It kind of worked. Oh, wait a second. Is it getting stuck on the tape? Maybe. Uh, let's try again. Oh! Ah, okay, it was getting stuck on something. Oh, and it's lost it. <laughs> oh no, it's spinning in a circle. Great. <laughs> well, it kind of works. That's cool. Progress! <laughs> Gotta do some more tuning. And maybe make an actual test rig. This isn't just a line on my floor. Uh, let's see if we can go from there. For this project, I wanted to make a little test track that would uh, have a couple of different purposes. Uh, one would be that it would be pretty smooth and consistent surface. Um, I also wanted to have like kind of a rim around it so that the robot, if it went off course, wouldn't just fall off a table or something like that. Um, and also I wanted to be able to have an even uh, color gradient on it. So I wanted to be able to paint the surface completely white and then use a uh, dark black insulating tape to uh, make uh, my track. So the contrast between the white and the dark would be very important uh, for the sensor. And one little manufacturing time lapse later and we have our little board. Okay, here is our board. Um, Cutting, gluing, sanding, painting, all very boring, but now we have a little board that we can use for a test track. as a little lip, so the robot can't just run off and fall off the edge of the table. Um, and yeah, this is it. Uh, I'm going to use some black electrical tape to map out a little path on the board. So we've got good contrast between the white and the black. Should give the sensor the best opportunity to work. And yeah, let's uh, see if we can tune this guy up and make him follow a path. All right, uh, <laughs> this isn't working out very well. Um, so I have my little thing set up here, uh, my test track set up, and it's just really not working. Uh, I can flick it on and it's... <laughs> yeah, she don't work. Um, so I messed around a bit with this and I've come to the conclusion that my little sensor module is not up to the job um so i think i'm gonna redesign the sensor module <laughs> and try again i have a few ideas so yeah i'm gonna try that and see um so yeah that'll be a little bit of a little bit of weekend work for me to try and figure that out but um yeah concept i think will work i just need to tweak it a little bit so yeah that'll come up next I'm gonna try and fix it make it work Okay, we have our two sensor modules. We have the old one and we have the new one. Uh, so let's talk about the differences and let's uh, talk about why I changed them and what I'm hoping to get out of it. So first difference you'll notice straight away is that uh, the little sensors themselves are closer together on the new one. So that is because of the tape line here. So if I throw this down, you see that it's uh, closer together. Uh, so there's less of a gap. And the reason for this is because with this guy, there's actually quite a large amount of deflection that has to happen before the sensor hits the tape line. So the robot has to go way off course before it'll even know that it should correct itself. 
so hopefully by these being closer together uh, it should detect any uh, divergence much quicker which will uh, give it the best chance of responding um, so second thing you may notice if you look closely this has a little six pin header at the top uh, this guy only has a little four pin header so the reason for this is that the outside pins that were on this guy um, are little drive pins for the LEDs. Um, so you remember from the previous video, we were using like a pulsing pattern on the LEDs, which I showed on the oscilloscope. Um, it turned out that <laughs> wasn't all that useful. So I was actually just putting, you know, 3.3 uh, volts onto these pins anyway, and just using st standard DC to power the LEDs. Um, so I can kind of do away with those pins and just power it from the main power, which is what I've done here. Um, a knock-on consequence of just having 3.3 volts onto these LEDs is that they kept burning out. Um, and with the way this is made, it's a real pain uh, to get the LEDs out. If they burn out, you might see some gouging on this one where I had to replace the LEDs. And yeah, it's just a bit of a pain. So on this one, I added a couple of resistors, current limiting resistors. And yeah, the LEDs are just there and they're powered just from the main uh, power supply for the sensor module. And yeah, they don't need extra pins to pulse it. So yeah, the four pins on this are just ground and power, and then the two outside pins are the two uh, sense pins as such, which pick up the signal from the uh, light-dependent resistors in there. Um, so on the old one, that signal was um, basically I had just two static value uh, resistors uh, connected in series with the light dependent resistor which made a voltage divider like a light dependent voltage divider and um, which basically just had you know a static uh, difference between them the only trouble with that is that these light dependent resistors they're not you know uniform between them and they're non-linear as well so i couldn't so they, they would give me different values and they would respond differently to lighting conditions which is obviously not ideal um so I did some work in the code to make like an averaging filter thing to try and account for that, which did work to an extent, but ultimately I just really wanted to be able to trim them. So hence why I've got these two little trim pots on this now. So the new version, the LDR is still in there. They're not connected with static resistors. Instead, they're connected in series with these two little trim pots. Uh, and I'm able to then able to trim these. Uh, individually so that they respond more or less the same to the uh, conditions so yeah just a little bit of a better setup there to to, to be able to make them uh, respond the same um i do have an idea where i was thinking that i could set up an op amp as a difference as a, a differencing amplifier and then have you know the two trim pots feeding into that and then just have one signal coming out of it um a little bit more analog electronics in there but i didn't bother with that <laughs> i'm just reading them uh digitally and then i'm doing the same little bit of filtering in the code um and from my initial tests of that it seems to be working a lot more stably so yeah so that is the main differences between the two modules uh we're gonna get this guy on the robot uh, i've done the initial kind of testing just to make sure it works and gives me good values uh so yeah time to Get onto the robot and try and reprogram the robot uh, or retune the robot's PID controller and see if we can get it to work uh, nicely. So that's coming up next. Okay, we've got the robot set up again. We've got a, a new sensor module in place uh, and I've done a very, very rudimentary PID tuning on it, um, which hopefully is just in the realm of returning sensible values. Um, so yeah, just going to test it out and see what happens on our little test track. Um, yeah, turn it on and let's see how she does. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, it seems to be working, kind of. Let's see if we can make the tyke turn. <laughs> it does it like a champ. Oh my God, look at this. <laughs> wow, I really did not expect this. This is like the most basic tuning i could have put on it and it appears to be more or less working it's not perfect but literally like i said just the most basic oh okay there we go <laughs> all right eh, not too bad put it back on the line and it goes again but yeah like i said this is like the most basic pid tuning i could have done on this 
so it definitely needs a little bit of work. But I am really impressed by that. Okay, gone off again. <laughs> All right, that's pretty impressive. Um, oh man, that's incredible. I'm so excited about that. <laughs> okay. All right, calm down, Ian. Got to do a little bit of PID tuning. Try and get that working a little bit finer. Like maybe figure out some cases for something it should do if it loses the line completely. Um, but yeah, that works <laughs> way better than I thought it was going to work. So a little bit more PID tuning and let's see if we can just make it continually do laps of this without falling off the track. Um, but yeah, I'm incredibly impressed by that. <laughs> All right, awesome. More tuning. Let's come back and try again. The initial tuning of the robot was pretty good, like a lot better than I thought it was um, going to be. But uh, there were still a couple of problems. There were two areas of the track that were quite tight. Um, one in kind of the bottom left section where it would uh, run off the track um, for the tight corner. And then once it, if it managed to get around that, then there was also another kind of tight-ish left on the right side of the track, um, which was quite difficult for it to get around. Um, so lots of tuning later, and we actually ended up getting to a pretty good, pretty reliable um, system that could make multiple laps of the track. Okay, this test is uh, no integral gain. 350 proportional gain. This is 300 proportional gain, 10 integral gain. Uh, no integral gain, 275 proportional, and a tiny bit of derivative. It still would occasionally go off the track, but most of the time I was able to get it to do, you know, dozens of laps of the track uh, before it would make some sort of mistake. And it was usually something to do with the little sensor module catching on the board or the little idler wheel catching on the piece of tape or something and kind of throwing it off. Um, so I ended up being actually really surprised with how good the tuning was and how reliable the little robot ended up being. So that's about it for this project. We ended up making a pretty successful little robot, um, used a novel homemade sensor approach, which I uh, wasn't sure if it would work. Turns out it did work pretty damn well. Um, so I'm really happy with this. Um, it was a fun little project and yeah, I really enjoyed doing it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed following along and watching. Um, and yeah, as always guys, um, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.